Hello, my name's Steve Ringer and welcome to Feeder Fishing. Right, we're doing something a little bit different today. We're gonna to do a live match. So I'm putting myself on the line here. We're at Southfield Reservoir, it's Feeder King. It's a, it's a qualifier today for a 12,000 pound final. For those that don't know Southfield, it's Bream and Skimmer fishing. My last two visits here have been pretty desperate, if we're honest. I had Super League here a month ago. I came 13th out of 15 in my section. And then I came here on a qualifier two weeks ago and struggled again. I'm not 100% certain what I've been doing wrong. What I will say is no one's been catching around me. So maybe I've not had the rub of the green draw wise, but I'd like to think there's a few things that I could do to get a bite. So I've got a few new ideas today. I'm gonna to try and be a little bit more positive as in the way I feed in. Normally you fish quite negatively here. The pegging's, as you'll see when we sort of open up on camera, the pegging's very tight. You haven't got loads of room. The fish don't tend to settle. So they're on the move a lot. So you tend to get little bursts of bites. But I'm gonna try and be a bit more positive today. Conditions are perfect. I mean, there's a big wind on, overcast. I've drawn peg 63, which my zone's 61 to 80. For those that don't know about Feeder King, you have to win your 20 pegs. 60 people here today, so a big match. You have to win your 20 pegs to make the final. So my zone is 61 to 80. As for my peg, on paper, I don't think it's a bad peg, to be fair. On paper in the zone, my zone 61 to 80. The wind's blowing a little bit down to 80, but you can never be in an happy draw in the early 60s. But what I will, say about Southfield is you just never know with this place the fish move around every day and what's a good peg one day can be a bad peg the next so I've got to sort of feel my way in but on paper a chance but we'll see how it pans out so we've got roughly 25 minutes now till the match starts so before we start I'll just run you through the bait okay as far as bait goes for Southfield I think it's a pretty sim in my head it's a pretty simple venue it's ground bait and worms starting with ground bait got a mix of Ringers natural, ringers are dark, 50-50 mix. Just my tried and trusted Bree mix. Mixed it quite dry to start with. I'm gonna wet it up a little bit with my atomizer, but I don't want it too cloudy. There's a big wind on today. This venue, for those that don't know it again, is very shallow. I reckon on my long line, probably only three foot of water and it's only five foot short. So it's a very, very shallow venue. It tows really hard. So I sort of want to keep all my bait quite close to the bottom to try and hold those fish. So ground bait, ringers, dark ringers, original, 50-50. Just mix two pints of each. So two pints dry natural, two pints dry dark. I mean, that's gonna be loads as far as I'm concerned. Other baits, I've got a kilo of dendrobinas. They're for chopping and for the hook. Uh, worms seem really good in here. They seem, from what I can make out, I'm no expert here. I've had some good results in years gone by, uh, but this year, as I said, it's been pretty dismal. But worms seem to be the go-to bait. They're what people feed. So, so they're going to be my main bait today. I've also got some dead maggots, whites and reds. I, I might feed an odd dead maggot, but other than that, an alternative hook bait, but I don't see myself fishing them much. I've also got dead red pinkies, a bunch of pinkies for the hook. If, it, if it's really tough, and I end up just for trying to scratch. I and mean, when they pay a five peg section here, and if it's really tough and I'm just trying to do my section, then a bunch of dead pinkies might catch me a little skimmer. But realistically, it comes down to worms. I've also got some red worms for me. I'm not a red worm man, I'll be brutally honest. I normally think feeding dendras, fish eat dendras, uh, so I'll fish dendras on the hook. But as I said, my results here haven't been uh, great of late, so I've bought some dendras. There's a lot of skimmers in here sometimes, like, 10 ounces to a pound and a half and I'm thinking a couple of little red worms might just trick one there's also a, a lot of blood worm in this venue so two little tiny red worms might just get me a couple of extra fish if the fishing's hard and all else fails so predominantly worms and ground bait maggots and pinkies just as a bit of a backup right we've got about 30 seconds to go I'm looking at a three line approach 50 and 30 meters and then maybe open up a really short line at 16 metres later on, but that's going to sort of depend what happens. The wind, wind's right for the short line. I'm going to put two feeders in at the start. Five old guru, 40 gram. 
on the long line and I'm going to put three on the 30 metre line. Same feeder but only with 30 gram just because I don't need the weight to get the distance. That's the, that's the all in. So literally, I'm going to put two of them in on the long line. I'm going to let them hit the deck. I'm going to just big toe on today, so I want it to all be on the bottom. If it was flat, I might be tempted to open them up on the surface. But today, I'm going to put them in and let them settle so they're properly, and I can empty them out on the bottom. That's what I like about these guru feeders. They're slightly tapered. The reason I'm only putting two in long, long is where I'm going to start. So I don't seem to put lots of bait there if I'm going to start there. I mean, you can't even get, there's literally no count. It's on the bottom. I've got, I don't know this place really well, but I think it's deeper on the inside and then shallow up. But what I have learned here is, the further, it's not necessarily like a casting match. The fish live on certain lines and just lately, 30 and 50 have been them lines. So I've put two out there. And I'm gonna put three in. And we're fishing half 10 to four, so five and a half hours, so plenty of time. Uh, let's get the right rod. This one's clipped up at 30 going to feed it exactly the same. The fish here don't tend to settle on lots of bait. They don't tend to settle, I think, because the pegging's are tight. They don't tend to settle at all. So it's not a venue where you fill it in. Like It's not traditional, like, ferry meadows style dreaming. It's more a venue where you set traps. And, like, from what I can sort of see of the place, you have to get your timings right. That seems to be, if you can get your timings right and start to get two lines on the go, that's when you do well. And that's something I haven't been able to do lately. But equally, to be brutally honest, nor has anyone around me. Uh, so it's really difficult of late to say, yeah, I'm doing it wrong, because nobody's caught anything. Well, when I say nothing, I've had three pound and 11 pound, so. I've been very negative in both them matches, so I will say that. And today, I'd rather go down swinging, so I'm gonna be a little bit more positive. I think I'm gonna put, I'm actually gonna put four in there. These guru feeders are so really good just because of that tape, but they release the bait. You can almost feel the bait come out of them. So they're a really fast release. Basically I'm putting like a big blob of worm like that in every feeder. So I'm gonna put four in. It's not a lot of bait, let's be honest, but I just feel like I've been really negative in two matches and caught nothing. So I might as well just be a little bit more attacking. I mean, the first time I ever come here, I didn't know nothing about it. I attacked it and actually won the match. And I've, I've had odd good results here since, but it's not a place I fish a lot, mainly because it's so far away. Ooh. Just wet that braid up. Probably just covered the GoPro in water. I say it's not a venue I fish loads. I'm going to start on a, something totally different to me in the form of a window. I'm not normally a window man, but I noticed last time I was here, a lot of the people that caught, caught on a window. So I'm gonna start on a couple of bits of wet red worm. Just nipping them off. 
on a window feeder and see what happens. I might switch back to a cage quite quickly to feel my way in, but I want to give this a go first. So as you can see, blown around a bit. two little bits of red worm. Medium guru window, 30 gram. All I'm doing is dropping the worms in, like so, and just scooping through it. So I'm not loading like what I could call traditional window feeder fishing. It's always funny here because you wait for that drop of the feeder and basically you don't get one. Got this trusty stopwatch. I'm going to be. Let's see if I can get this. I'd rest sitting a little. I'd sit in a little bit high, and I'd like always the way when you first start. I'm going to try and be reasonably patient. I mean, a lot of people around me are feeding that sort of 15, 16 metre line from the off. Obviously, I've got, I'm not one to uh, copy on here, but I feel personally it's better. I'd rather open it maybe halfway through or with two hours to go. Uh, uh, that way I've got better control of it, as in, it looked, but if, if I see someone catch on it, I'll open it up much faster. But at the moment, I'm thinking for the first four hours, 50 and 30 are going to be my two lines and then I'll change things up obviously depending on what I see. The beauty of here is pegging's very tight, well that's not the beauty but the same for everyone but you can see really well down the line I and mean, I can see if a fish gets caught pretty much 10 pegs either way so it's an easy venue to keep an eye on and to start I'm going to fish I'm going to have a couple of 10 minute chucks to start. Just keep an eye on what everyone else is doing, see if any fish get caught, and then reevaluate. But I think for them big, I haven't been able to catch any bigger fish. My numbers of fish here lately have been quite good. But I'm going to try and be a bit more patient today. And hopefully when I get a bite, it'll be a proper one. So I've set up them two lines, we're fishing. And it'd be nice if next time you come back to me it won't be too long I mean what I have noticed here is it's rare you go like three hours of nothing and then win so realistically the lads that catch if you're on them you tend to catch pretty early so I'd expect to have something in the first hour if I'm gonna have unless the venue's gonna fish very hard because there's always a chance in this place you never know how it's gonna fish I mean, that wind's got a bite to it today so that's why two and four feeders have gone in. Now I'm just going to sit tight. A couple of 10 minute chucks, two red worms or a bit of dendrobina, and just keep an eye on whether there's any early fish caught. And if there are, what line they're caught on. You know, my tip's right round already, I'm in the toe. Not so far, I'm not going to see a bite, but there's a big toe on which. That's one of the reasons I've started on a window feeder. Get the bait on the bottom, get it pinned. I'm not, the water's so shallow, I think the toe's immense. And like, I literally think your bait can move. Hence why. Oh. Just had a little in. Got, got a small fish, I think. No, it's just, I don't think I've got it. It was a small fish bite. A few little tiny pommies in there, it was like one of them bites. Worms are gone. I think I had it on briefly, but it felt it wasn't a skimmer or a bream or anything like that. But it was an indication, which is never a bad sign on here. Keep the two, two red worms on there. Oh. Just taking the tails off them. Just think personally they're a little bit more attractive that way. And they look a bit more like the 
the bits of choppy I'm feeding. I mean, these fish are fish for a lot on here. So they see a lot of bait, they see a lot of hooks. So I think they take a little bit of catching personally. So, right. Well, it was an indication. So, reset the trap and see where we go from here. I'm on my third chuck. And I've just that. First chuck, obviously, I had that bite. Second chuck, both my worms were vagged. Third chuck, I had a quick bite. Which is pretty sure I've got this one. I'm not quite sure if it's, oh, we'll net it anyway. So we're off the mark, little hybrid. That's what I did say I thought that first bite was. That's a little skimmer actually. But we're off the mark and it's actually a better start than I've been having. So that's something. I missed that bite first joke. Second shot, I had a couple of little tiny indications. Come back, the red worms were ragged. Just put a bit of denger on, caught that skimmer. The idea being dendrons are a little bit tougher than red worms. So if there's a few small fish there, they might hang on to the dendra a bit better. But it's a better start than I've been having. I mean, looking around up, it's difficult for me to see to my right because obviously my tip's on my left. But I've only seen a couple of small fish get caught. I mean, last time I was here, in my zone, they were catching bream from the off, sort of 10 pegs to my right. That doesn't seem to have happened today. We're 25 minutes in. What I will say is I haven't had, a, although I said I was gonna fish 10 minute chucks, I haven't as yet had a 10 minute chuck purely on the basis of indications. If I get an indication, because of the fact it might damage the bait, I'm reluctant, unless I can tell it's a line bite, which I haven't had, I'm gonna be reluctant to leave it out there. purely on the basis that if the bait's done there's less chance of a fish picking it up. Uh, but looking down the line at the minute it looks pretty quiet which I'm not unhappy about. So yeah it means there's not been a pocket of fish anywhere that I can see of yet. Obviously I can't see right down the bottom end of my section which is where the wind's blowing. A couple of good anglers down there obviously Gaz Lambert and Steve Whitfield on the end. But as I said, this isn't a bad area. And the beauty of Southfield if you, is you don't know how it's going to fish. So a few indications early is never a bad thing, even if they are small fish. What I'm going to do, I'm probably going to stay on the window for at least one more chuck. And then what I might do is have qu two quick chucks, like two minute chucks on a little rocket just to cloud it up a little bit, then one more chuck on the window, and then I reckon we'll be roughly up to the hour mark, and I'll be thinking about looking at my shorter line. I mean, resting lines can work really well here, but what I will say is resting lines only works if you're getting bites on lines. If you're not getting any bites, you're resting a dead swim, which doesn't really achieve anything, so. But what can happen is you can get into a nice rhythm of like, bouncing off each line, nicking an odd fish, but, I'm getting ahead of myself there, so like I say, a fish in the net is never a bad start. Hopefully, we'll get something a little bit bigger next time. Okay, we're 45 minutes in. I'm just, I'm just having two. I've had a, had a four minute. I'm just having a, a seven minute on a little Nisa rocket. Mainly the, because the indications have died off, which is normal here. There's often, often when you start, there's a few small fish about, but they disappear inside sort of 20 minutes, which is pretty much what's happened today. So I've had that one little skimmer, a couple of other indications, and now basically the last three casts have resulted in nothing. I've seen one decent fish caught, but like a pound and a half fish probably I don't know, 12 pegs to my left. So a long way from me. Uh, conditions are good, but it, it's cold. 
the wind, the wind isn't warm at all. It's, I mean, it looks good. I'm still confident we're going to get a visit. Just got a feeling it's going to fish harder than normal. In my head, I was thinking, I don't know, you might still want, I, I thought 25 pound will win this zone. This is normally, for those that don't know Southfield, this is the hardest zone. Uh, for whatever reason, normally the lowest weights, to, the lowest winning weight for a zone will be this zone. But as a general rule of thumb, it's also fairer, so it's not a bad zone to be in. But like I say, it, it can be harder. And all right, I am facing the wrong way, but it's pretty easy to see down the line. And I'm not saying no one's caught anything to my right, because I'm sure there's odd fish. But I don't think there's an area where anyone's catching steady. So what I'm thinking is, give this another 30 seconds, that'll take it up to seven minutes. And I might, we'll be 50 minutes in then. And I'm thinking a quick drop in at 30, just to rest this line now. There should be a bit of bait out there. Uh, but indications are pretty minimal now. Like the small fish have died off, so I'm sort of thinking, 15, 15 minutes off this line, let it settle. Again, and then they might be able to nick one on the way back. It also be interesting just to see, sometimes you can drop in at 30 and get one straight away, just wetting the, in case you're wondering what I'm doing, just wetting the braid off, so when I switch rods in a second, I'm not gonna be casting off dry braid. What you tend to find when you switch lines is, you can get one first chuck, but normally it, it, it's second chuck, your best chance of a bite. So you're almost setting it up with your first chuck. So I'm, I'm going to this in because this doesn't feel like it's going to go, and there's not a lucky one hanging on. So I'm going to have a drop in at 30. I'm just literally going to spend 15 minutes, I think, unless obviously I start to catch. Bait's not marked at all. Just tip the worm with a pinky then, just for something a little bit different. As you can see there, little four hole, little four hole Nisa rocket. Rockets sort of like the way they hold the bait in, particularly on a day like today when it's towing. a blob of worm in it and I'm gonna first couple of chuck I'm gonna have two five minute chucks on that and in my head this first I'm gonna give this say five I'm gonna give this first, this first chuck three minutes and in my head I'm setting it up with this chuck rather than obviously if I, if I can get one if it will go straight around then great setting it up what I'm going to do is going to have a, this chuck three minutes just to put some bait down again although obviously I'll put four in you just don't know what's still left there that's this is the thing with like juggling two lines you never know whether you've had a visit or not to be brutally honest uh, so three minute chuck then a five minute chuck and then if that doesn't work I'm going to chuck a window full of worm over it for sort of a seven, eight minute chuck and then look back long again. Basically I'm sort of dobbing here and there, trying to work out what the best line's probably going to be. At the minute there's literally nothing being caught, so I can't look and think. Normally when it's harder, from what I've, my limited experience here, the longer line's better. But it doesn't mean to say you're not going to get an odd random fish on that short line. And also, one thing I have learned here in the past, you can't just keep chucking down the same hole. It doesn't, you don't seem to get a visit that way. So almost sometimes you need to come off it to give yourself a chance of a bite, which is what I'm doing now. There's a big old toe on it. And my, you know, I mean, I've got an ounce tip in here and it's right round. One quick word while I remember, I will talk to you about my setup a bit later on during the match, my rigs, etc. You might notice I'm on quite a long hook length. Hook length rules out, you can't fish any shorter than 50 centimetres here. So if you watch this and think, well, surprised he didn't try a short hook length, 
the rules dictate your hook length has to be 50 centimetres below the feeder. So when I'm fishing my little helicopter as I am now, which I'll show you in detail, I've got a 65 on just to allow for the feeder, and then from a running rig a 50. But if you're watching it and thinking, well, why didn't he try this? The reason is these are the rules here. It's equally, there's no hair rigging. You can't hair rig worm. I'm a big fan of hair rig worm. All the baits here have to go on the hook. Pellets aren't allowed either. So it's a very simple sort of venue, as in it's an old school sort of venue, as in how you fish it. But it's a very popular venue. They get great attendances here. Most of the matches are sold out. And the beauty of it is you can never stand in the draw queue in the morning and know where it's going to be won from. But like I say, at the minute, it seems very slow. I'd say condition, other than the fact the wind's got a bite to it, conditions are perfect. So, right, that's the three minutes. Just put a blob of worms in. I'm not, I have to be honest and say, I'm not feeling a bite on this line straight away, but I just felt it won't hurt the other line to come off it. Rather than just plugging away. It'd actually be nice if a few fish started to come out just to so you could get a bit of inspiration. Definitely a little bit more depth there. And that's 28, in case you're wondering the size, that's a 28 gram four hole little Nisa rocket. What I like about that feeder, it's not one. See at the base, it's quite sealed in. So it holds you, if there's a big toe, I think it holds your bait in a little bit better than other rockets. I think, say, the Matrix rocket, etc., lets your bait out very fast, which is good when there's not much toe. But here, I want to try and pin everything to the bottom. Equally, you might be thinking, why not a big feeder? The fish here seem to be really spooky. So, in, from what I've seen of the place, small feeders produce more bites, or a window feeder that goes in nice and quiet. It's not a venue whereby you spod loads of bait in, big feeder, chuck it out full of worms, two big worms and catch. The fish are very skittish, moving around a lot, so it's sort of smaller feeders, faster fishing, moving about, just looking for little runs on your line. So, start the watch again. I'm gonna give this one six, seven minutes, then maybe an eight minute on this, and then back to that long line, because, I don't know, it look, all looks pretty, pretty dead to me is the honest uh, but like I say we're we're an hour we're not an hour it we're just coming up to an hour into a five and a half hour match so plenty of time and in a way I'm happy that no one else is from what I can see no one's got like three big bream down the other end but it is possible they have but I think it's unlikely because this isn't a bad area and I can see down into the 50s where the fish were last time like I say, I've only seen one decent fish caught, so that's the plan. It'd be nice to get a pull on this line, but in reality, first trip back on that long line's got to be worth one. Okay, we're basically just up to the two hour mark, and realistically, nothing's happening. And when I say nothing's happening, not just me, nothing's happening really anywhere. Made a few inquiries. There's two single bream in the 70s and a really odd person with a little skimmer. And that's literally it. The good part about that is no one's running away with the zone. The bad part is obviously it means it's fishing rock hard. Last time we spoke, I was on the 30 line. I did exactly what I said I was going to do there, nothing. Gone back out, had a 12 minute uh, on a five hole rocket, for a big feeder, sit and wait just to see, nothing. Tried the window again, nothing. So now I've just had, I think it started the watch. So I've just chucked back out, I'm back on the little four hole, and I've just slopped up the ground bait a little bit, just for a bit of cloud. Yeah, it's still towing, but just to see if I can get a bit of attraction. Because literally nothing is, well, there's nothing. Uh, when it's like this, it's so tough 
to know what to do. And if, if I was at somewhere like Ferry Meadows, it's different. It feels different to this place because the peggings are so close here when no one else is, you're not catching and no one's catching. It's really hard to see where your bites are coming from. I'd like someone around me to catch a bream, to be honest, just, or obviously at best if I could catch it, just to get, so you think, get you going again, so you think there's something there. At Ferry, I think, because it's a different type of water, deeper, you feel like there's more things you can do and more bites come out of the blue. But, I still think, look, I think this isn't a bad area. There's someone down there is just in a, in a, definitely seems to be more fish. Little fish, very little fish. It seems to be an odd more net going out in the 70s than here. But on paper, I'd have said the 60s can be better than the 70s. Uh, like I said, I just don't think you're going to bore anything on, because if you're going to bore fish on, everyone would catch a few, because as it gets harder, people leave the feeder in longer, etc, etc. So if it was a case of just chucking out and leaving it, everyone would catch a few. So I feel like I've got to do something. So, you know, feeding, like I so I wet it up a little bit, the atomizer, and just hardly any worm now. I fed a bit of worm at the start, obviously, but like, there's a fish up there now, that's a better fish. That's like quite a way, sort of 10 pegs to my left. That's a fish. Just, don't know, it's, it's not very big at all actually. I don't know, it's just really tough when it's like this. Like, I'm going through the card as in trying lots of things, but I really need a bite just to give me that inspiration and think, right, I've got something I can work with. No, we're not. The couple of fish I've seen caught, the bites have been quite quick, as in they've chucked out and it's gone within two minutes, but I don't feel you can just keep chucking. And condition wise, the wind's dropped a little bit now. It's cold, but that's the only thing I'll say. And this place being shallow, I can only think that wind having a bit of a bite to it has shut the fish down a little bit. I can't think of anything else really, why it's not fishing. And from what I can gather, it's not fishing really all the way up. And that said, I know it is a water that can just switch on. Uh, but at the minute, I've got three red worms on as well at the minute, just fishing for a fish. Three little red worms, just nip the tails off them. Looks spot on, but not producing any bites, is the honest appraisal at the minute. But it's the sort of venue where you could get a run and get three and three. I think this has been out three, well, probably four minutes because I forgot to start the watch. And I'm going to switch back to a, to a window because the only fish I can see coming out are on a window. So I've got a sort of base what I'm doing on that. I don't massively see the point dropping on my 30 metre line. I feel like I've got to get my bites at 50. I just don't see what I might do ne next chuck is, where is it? Chuck a small window, put a load of, well quite a lot of neat worm into it. Put, stick with the three red worms and chuck it another 10 minutes on that. But there's just no, no pattern whatsoever. I haven't seen anyone catch any fish either on their shorter lines, so I'm reluctant to sort of spend time there. So I think I'm going to reel this in. Chuck that little tiny window. No, it's not tiny, the small one. A bit of worm in it, another 10 minute. And then three red worms, look. Look a bit, a bit dead now, to be fair. I'm going to put three more on. A bit of what's gone in the thing. 
I still don't feel like I'm out of it, but equally, because I'm not exactly what I'd call in a rich vein of form here, it just feels like this is a, another match that's going the same way. But it's the same for them around me as well, as in, there's just nothing coming out fish wise for me to learn anything from. But like one beam would just totally change my mentality but it's all right saying one beam but i've got to catch it just see if a smaller feeder that's not literally all i'm doing is ringing the changes i don't really want to pile loads of bait in because it's not there's nothing feeding and it's not that type of venue. My, my attitude is in my head, unless I hear some information to say, oh, they're catching well at the other end. I'm gonna sort of sit tight, ease off everything a little bit, and then re-go again with sort of two hours to go, sort of two o'clock-ish, we're half 12 now. But it'd just be nice to get a little bit of inspiration. But we'll keep plugging away, that's all we can do. So we are, oh, mm -mm -mm. cool, that was good timing. Literally, I've just had, I've just been back on the inside line for nothing. Uh, three, well, say nothing, I had four chucks and I had an indication, but no bite. Just gone back out on the four wheel rocket. I had two chucks with it quite, quite wet nothing and i've just plugged it really hard i've just put a 16 hook on as well i've been on a 14 because i'm fishing worm it's quite a big bait i just thought i'll just put a 16 feeder special on 012 to see and i've had a bite first chuck is that the line i don't know or is it just coincidence i did plug the feeder really hard then as well quite dry ground bait tiny bit of worm but it's only been out there three minutes it's the first bite I've had in. I did have an indication on that short line. Whether it was a bite, I don't know. Worm wasn't touched. It could have been a little line bite. I'm taking my time with it because uh, it's not exactly been prolific. And from what I can make out, there's hardly been... ...any, any fish caught. You know, when two breams probably winning this 20 pegs. But there's still, still got two hours 45 to go. And the conditions are, st I know it is really cold, but conditions are still good. Well, I think they're good anyway. And I just think this isn't a bad area. So at some point, I am going to get a chance. It's not a big a couple of pounds, but two pounds more than I had. Uh, two pounds more than I had five minutes ago. Two little tiny red worms. Little blob of worm in the feeder. I don't know whether something as simple as dropping down a hook size or it's just literally coincidence that I dropped it on that fish's nose but it sort of got me interested again because just I feel like I'm, I'm, I've been working hard but literally nothing's been happening and like, part of me still wonders like where on earth that fish came from. Not a 
happy with that chuck. Wind's just got up a little bit. Having had that fish, I want to get it back right on the spot. To be fair, it's the first bad chuck I've had all day. Just going to put a, another bit of worm on. Little blob of choppy. Plug it nice and hard. That wind had just dropped and now it's just got back up again. That's better. I always like, don't know when it's hard, I just think it's nice to be on the money, so to speak. I don't mind having an odd deliver, deliberate chuck around the bait, but I want to know that by and large I'm fishing over it. Uh, like I say, from what I can see and what I've been told, two beam, probably six pounds winning this zone, I've probably got two and a half, but we've still got two hours, 40 minutes to go. So on paper, plenty of time, just whether I can get any more bites. Like I say, that's just literally, it's not come first chuck back on the line, it's just come totally out of the blue. But we'll see. Could have been coincidence that I changed that hook size. I mean, a 14 is a decent size hook, but a lot of it's hidden in the worm, so. I fail to see that it's, it, but I'm just in that sort of zone at the minute where I'll, I'll try anything. There's so few fish coming out and it's just about confidence. I just like something to spark. So you, all of a sudden I think, right, I've got something I can work on now. Because uh, I've just done nothing. You know what I mean, I don't see the point of just ploughing bait in when there's no fish being caught. I'm, I might up it last hour, to be fair. But at the minute, there doesn't seem any point at all ploughing a load of bait in. Last hour, I might be, I might be forced into it. But at the minute, it's just literally like there's just so few fish being caught which tells me they're not feeding, even where, not I mean, I don't know if there's many fish out in front of me anyway, but wherever they are, they're not feeding. So lashing a load of bait in, I just fail to see how that's gonna achieve anything. So I'm gonna persevere. I'm just gonna keep rotating the two lines. Before I had that fish, I was debating something, doing something I hate doing, and that's going out to 55, I'm at 50, going out to 55. But I'm, now I've had that fish, I'm going to hold off that. I don't like moving and I always feel like it's desperation. But when it's really hard, there's always something in my mind thinks if I could be a bit further out than everyone else, you've got more chance. But equally, I know that Southfield isn't always a venue that works like that. So I'm going to stick to my guns at least for the next 40 minutes till 2 o'clock, then we'll be at the two hour mark. And I'm, I'm also going to consider put in, opening up that 16 metre line. I, I might as well open it up because I've literally got nothing to lose. And if you, I've never caught there in a match, but odd people do. And if you get them there, they're big four pound, they can often be four pounders. So it's worth opening up anyway. So that's the plan. I think I'm going to stick to sort of like six minute chucks for, for the next, for the next 40 minutes. Probably going to give this another 20 minutes on this line, then drop back onto that shorter line. Just to see if I can nick one. So, speak to you soon. Well, another hour seems to have sailed by. Had that fish out of the blue. Look like I may have had a tiny vibration on the tip the next chuck. Nothing. I've just come back short as a little indication, but look more like a small fish pulling up the bait. There is a few fish come out now in the low 70s. I reckon somebody's got double figures and there's a couple of them with two breen now. Just 
I don't know, it's such a strange place, purely on the basis. There's just no pattern. Like, I haven't seen anyone catch a bream within five pegs of me, and yet there's a little pocket, obviously, down there where there's an odd one. I mean, it's still time, we're two o'clock, two hours to go. I'm just on the short line at the minute, but the little bit of experience I've got on it tells me that when you can't catch on your long line, you don't catch on your short line either. But I just thought I'd rest it for 20 minutes and then go back out. Uh, I think I'm going to hold off like really up in it for another half hour. But it's going to get to the stage soon where I've got to put some bait in because I've got to do something. Wind's just dropped again now. But it's just, like in this area, on the left he's got one fish, on the right he's not had a bite. And that sort of says <laughs> there's obviously not loads of fish in this area. I guess I still do think there's a chance because it's Southfield, anything can happen here. But you need them bream to do away, and the fact no one's caught one in this area, like a pop, when I say bream, I'm talking £3 plus, suggests to me at the minute they're not here. If they were, would be, I think a couple would have been caught because they've been caught in other areas. And that's, I guess, what makes this pace of pot just so random. And it's been out, what, five minutes? Not moved. I mean, after a bit, I haven't caught, this year I haven't caught any bream really under two visits. I've caught a few skimmers. But in the past when I've caught my bream, they've been on the what I call my middle line, the 30 metre line. But, but like I said, I've always had odd bites on my long line as well. It's just a bit. I think it's when the pegging's so tight, it's just hard to, to see where your fish are coming from. But they're not coming on. It doesn't seem like they're coming on this 30 metre line, that is for sure. So I'm going to go back out. And I don't f feel like I'm having a bad match. Obviously, in terms of what's in my keep net, it's not a great one. <laughs> but I don't really know. I don't feel there's like anything I've, I've done massively wrong, because, like I say, there's just no fish coming out. All I can hope is that I get a run at some point. But at the minute, the only place I've had a bite is the long line. So I guess that's got to be my bank. I've gone slightly left that shot. And with my thinking being, what toe there is, is ripping that way, so to the left. So a bit of bait might be dragging that way. If there's an odd fish, it might be sitting down toe. I'm picking off a few freebies that are just drifting along. But like the odd person I've seen catch is caught in like little bursts, but there's an area I'd say between sort of, what am I, 63, sort of 70 to 75, where like four four people have got like a couple of bream. Whereas this area, no one's got any. Which seems to sort of tie in with my current form on here. Good peg on paper, but not... Not want to start fishing, and it's not like... What I don't get is no one else is catching. You know, and I always can say, it's easier to say you've got it wrong when they're catching around you, but no one's catching around me, so... What do you do? I'm debating that short line. So few bites, I'm not even convinced it's worth putting it in. 
I just really cannot see a bike there. Just on the basis, I can't even get a bottom over two lines. How am I going to get a bike close to the bank? Uh, but I don't know. I'll perhaps have a. I've got 25 minutes really to think about that. If I'm going to put it in, it has to go in with an hour and a half to go, I'd say. such a strange venue. Like I've been through the card, I've been on medium window, small window, six old Nisa, five old Nisa. I've got a few other feeder options, but I don't know, I've tried slopping the ground bait up, I've tried it dry. And the only thing I've been debating in this was maybe an hour and a half to go it's just to put it's a big guru bait up window feeder, fill that with choppy and empty it on the long line. So there's just a load of neat choppy gone in the water. Just for something different, like an impact. It's like, part of thinks, well it can't kill it, can it? Because I can't get a bite anyway. Basically I'm just trying to go through the card trying a few things that might work. I'm just thinking something like that. Big introduction of worms in one hit. Might trigger something. I'm convinced that a few bean will feed late, but whether, whether it's gonna be, someone's just made wonder. Whether it's gonna be in this area or not, I'm not convinced. It just doesn't, there's been so few fish caught along here at the minute. And it just feels like that they're not along here. Whether the wind has pushed them down a bit, I don't know. But we're an hour and 53 from the end, and uh, realistically, we're looking for miracles as far as winning this zone at the minute. It's just. But like two beaming, two chucks. But it's just hard to see one coming when no one's got one. Fish just been caught, what, seven, eight pegs to my left then. So anyway, we'll keep, keep plugging away. I'm gonna hold off that big window full of worms for a couple more chucks, but then I feel like I might as well put it in. Because literally nothing's happening anyway. I can't kill a dead swim, so see what happens. I think it's, well, I think it's pretty safe to say it's just not happening. It's not just happening for me, it's not happening for anyone in this little area. I'm sort of starting to force, oh, unbelievable. I've had two bites in about four hours and two of them have come while we've actually been talking. I've just put a large window on just to get more bait in, basically. On the long line, put three red worms on, gone back to a 14. To be fair, I did have an indication last chuck. About put a 14 on three red worms, and it's been out nine minutes. And literally, I was just about to reel in. another bite totally out of nowhere basically but I'm sort of just forcing it now I've got 30 gram large guru on 65 centimeter length plenty of worm and I'd had two four minute chucks just before this but on the second chuck I did have an indication but there was a grebe in front of me so I wasn't sure if it was that We've got an hour and 20 to go, basically. If I get this fish out, what I'm going to do 
I'm going to chuck back. No, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to chop. I really need to feed that 30 line. But equally, I need to go straight back, to be fair. Because that often sometimes you get two. So what I'm going to do is have another chuck. A lot, probably a, a 10 minute. Mm, 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 mm. Have a 10 minute though, and then there's a little bit similar size to the other one, like two pound. Uh, yeah, I think have another 10 minute. Though. Get three more red worms on. I gave up on the 16 purely on the basis. Got me one bite, but the last thing I wanted was to get another bite and then lose it. And I just think if you're fishing a big bait like three reds. You might as well have a decent size hook in it. So I'm, I'm out of chop. The reason I'm chopping in the ground bait is I'm out. Of, I haven't got any more fresh choppy, so I'm going to chuck this back. There you go. Large guru. Guru back out there while I do some fresh chop. Just like this, just a strange, I mean that bite literally just came completely out of nowhere. No rhyme or reason to it. Round it goes and another two pounder. I just need a, I need a runner fish, that's the problem. And what's killing me more than anything is the fact I've not had a bite at 30 metres at all. Hence what I'm thinking is, this chuck... And then I'm going to put that in full of worm at 30 and persevere at 50. I don't see any point opening up 16, I really don't. I haven't seen anyone catch a fish there and there's hardly any fish coming out and a lot of people have fished that line already. So I think I stick to what I've got. If I'd caught fish at 50, if I'd had fish at 30, I'd open up 16, but I haven't so. Realistically, I don't see the point. Uh, I might as well just stick to what I'm doing. But I need to be more positive now, because that's the only way I'm going to get back in it. I mean, realistically, I could only be fishing from a five peg section now anyway, I'd say. The guy two to my left's got a little bit more than me, but that's still achievable. I just like a nice finish. You know, I mean, at least I feel like if I've got a half decent finish by being positive, I'll be getting some sort of reward. It's a hell of a toe on it now. Wind's actually probably straightened a little bit. Could just do with a proper one, like a three pound plusser before that sort of last hour mark, just to give me something. But it hasn't happened yet. So, two minutes 30. Can, I'm gonna give this till 10 minutes. Big one of them, full of worm at 30 meters, back out to 50. I'm gonna stay on the big window. Might as well fish a big feeder now till the end. 
try and be pretty patient and just see if I can get like maybe three bites in the last hour. I said I've only had three bites all day, that's going to take some doing. But last hour's got to be the best chance. It'd just be nice if I could find that straight back out there and then it would have gone straight round. But it's just not, not that sort of day. Just no pattern to it at all. I do believe if I had been on fish, I don't think it's that complicated. But until I can get on some fish at this venue, it's easy to say that. But the fact that no one's catching around me suggests that we can't all be doing it wrong. But I just think we're not on that pocket of fish today. But the beauty of Southfield is, and I'm not keep saying it, when you go and put your hand in the draw bag in the morning, you don't know where that pocket's going to be. It's virtually, well, it's literally is a different place every single match. Yeah, there's areas that are more consistent, but overall it's pretty random. So. Anyway, hour and a quarter to go. Five more minutes on this, this chuck, and then big window in at 30, couple more chucks on this, and then I'm gonna finish, drop back in at 30 just to see. I mean, and realistically, I need three bites in the last hour. Is that achievable? Based on so far, no, but I've got to give myself a chance, so. And the way I've been fishing, it's been fine, but I feel like I might as well attack it for the last hour. So, we shall see. Okay, I had that fish, chucked back out, unsurprisingly nothing. So I'll give it 10 minutes, like I said I was gonna, and I've put, oh, it's on that other rod, but basically I'll put the big bait up, Guru, and I'll get it off there so you can see. Oh. Put one of them in full of worms at 30 metres, which is a fair bit of bait. And I just chucked back out. It's been out six minutes, but not moved on the long line. So just where here, there's just nothing coming out. But like from 71 to seven, well, 70 to 75, it seems there's an odd fish. Not loads of fish, but there's like three of them in that area with double figures. Whereas, not being funny, no one here is getting anywhere near double figures at the minute. We've got literally one out, dead on an hour to go. While, obviously I'm fishing this chuck out, I'll just talk you through my actual setup. Basically, because of the wind it's so strong, I need to know I'm fishing every chuck, so I'm fishing a little helicopter. So I've got rods of 12 foot tournaments, ounce or ounce and a half tips. Ounce and a half tips for the long line because of the toe. Ounce tips for the shorter line because I can get away with it a little bit more. 010 tournament Evo braid, casters and reels. Then I've got 12 pound leaders, three and a half arms length of 12 pound shockers. And I've literally got two little guru line stops and a size 18 quick chain swivel, little twizzled loop and a loop and a snap link at the bottom for the feeder. Dead simple, it's what I call a helicopter because it spins. You just don't get tangled with this setup, even if you're chucking small up baits into a big wind. I, I don't personally think it's the best setup for what I call playing fish, but if you just need to know you're fishing, then it's, then it's spot on. Because at least you know your, your bait's in the water, your hook length's straight, everything's right. So. When there's a big wind on, if you're looking for an anti-tangle rig, there's not much better than the helicopter. Uh, as for the fishing, it's just, it just hasn't got going at all. I mean, it feels like it's, I don't know if I've got used to the cold, but it feels like it's warmed up a little bit. But I mean, I'm looking down the line and there's just nothing. Nothing happening at all. This has been out eight and a half minutes. I'm going to give it till 10. And then I might as well have a look at 30 metres. I think look at 30 metres, maybe two five minute chucks. And then back to the long line. Because if I'm going to get three bites in this last hour, which 
I don't. I just don't see where they're coming from. But I've still got to give myself the best chance of getting them. It's Alfred is that sort of venue where your tip could just go around three times in three chucks. But I've always no what I've noticed here. There's little clusters of fish. You don't know where they're going to be, and if they're catching around you, you seem to get a few bites. But when no one's catching, you don't tend to get one person suddenly have a have like that amazing finish. If there's, if there's been some fish, say like one or two pegs away, they, they can suddenly rock up, but, but there just hasn't been any fish in this little area. Well, if there has, none of us have caught them, let's say. You know, like I said, I don't feel done much wrong. Perhaps been a little bit too busy, but if I'd have just chucked out and left it and not caught anything, I'd now be saying, well, perhaps not been busy enough, so I've certainly not been in and out loads. This hasn't been enough indications or bites to work with. That's the long and short of it. And it's hard to beat myself up when no one around me has hardly had a bite. It's just a case now of, I think I'm probably two, three pound off winning the section for the, to the lad on 61. So, if I could get two or three bites this last hour and nick the section, that would be... That would probably be what was achievable on the day, if I'm honest now. Although, I wasn't disappointed with this draw. Same as the last round, I drew 43. And I wasn't disappointed with that either, but... That's Southfield, so... That's been out of 10. Can't even get a lucky one on the end. When you look thin, you get one hanging on the end. With these conditions, you just think your rod should just be getting towed in, but it's not. I was about to say the anti tangle rig's tangled, but it's not. It's just. Uh, twist it up. Decided against the 16 metre line, there just doesn't seem fishing is too. I just think there's got to be more fish about to catch at 16 metres. Might, might be wrong, but the fact that everyone else is fishing it and no one else has had a bite on it suggests to me that it's not worth me wasting my time. That's something I tend to do a lot try and keep an eye on what lines other people are fishing. So I can use it to try and gauge my own swim. So, because they're not catching, it can save me a bit of time, in theory. It feels like it's been like a winter's day, to be honest. Right. This is over all that worm that I put in. Be nice if the rod just got jack dragged straight in. But it's not been that sort of day, to be fair. It's definitely warmed up a little bit. I think it's because the sun's come out. So what I'm thinking is two five minute chucks. And then unless I see something or decide I need a, a beam later on, I'll probably just fish the long line till the end. because uh, that's where my free bite, free fish have come from. Yeah, I haven't spent loads of time on this 30 metre line, but it's, from what I know, you drop in here and if they're there, they're there. And I haven't seen anyone else catching on this line. I mean, the one thing I've sort of learned in my visits is, if it's rock hard, if it's hard, you don't get odd fish short, you get them all long. Well, that's how it seems, that's what it's been like around me anyway, so. But I still think it's worth a 10 minute rest on a long line. That'll give me 40 minutes. Oh, just had an indication then. That was definitely a liner. Probably, if, the way my day's gone, it's probably a fish at 16. But it was definitely an indication that was. Like a 
the first indication I've had all day where I thought, oh, that could have been a line bite. It was quite slow. Uh, on the basis of that, I shall probably have three chucks there now. Because that was definitely an indication. Whether it's catchable or not, and where the fish was swimming, we don't know, but... It makes me think there's a chance of a bite there. And like I said, it, from what I've seen, if you're going to catch... Most of the boom I've ever caught here have been on that 30 line rather than the long line. The long line's a bite's line. But the beam do seem to like that shorter line, but you've got to be on fish to catch there. So, but that was definitely an indication. It'd be nice to get three, four pounders now in three chucks, but I don't realistically see that happening. But it was definitely an indication. I was hoping it might just pull straight round, but it's been out. Two and a half minutes. But it's not not produced a quick bite. When the south was really on, you switch lines, put it down, and it's round within seconds. But I'm gonna definitely gonna have another chuck there, maybe another two, just based on that sign, because it looked a bit linerish rather than it was a bit too slow to be a small fish pulling at the worms. So, two more chucks here, back to the long line. And I'll, if I have not got a fish, I'll update you again with half hour to go when we'll be in the last chance to lose. As you can see, I'm not playing a fish, and there is 30 minutes to go. Just no signs. To be fair, I haven't even seen a fish caught in the last half, since the last boats were anywhere. Just nothing. I came in short, obviously, I had that indication straight away, and I honestly thought I'd get one, two more chucks, nothing. Just gone back long. This is the first chuck back long, to be fair, but it's been out seven minutes. It's not moved. No one else is around me is moving either. I don't know whether to finish at 30 or stay out here. That line has got me thinking, like, well, that indication wasn't a big liner if it was a liner. It's got me thinking there might be a bite at 30. But I haven't seen anyone catch a fish there, but then <laughs> there's no one catching a fish on any line now. It's a complete mystery, to be brutally honest. I don't really feel I've done anything wrong. You just, it's, it's boom fishing at the end of the day. And the only thing about this place is you never know where they'll be, but I just honestly don't feel like there's, they've been it. If they're here, they're not feeding. That's, and from what I gather, well, it's not fished well, but there was a little pockets where there was an odd fish feeding but there's lots of areas where there's just been nothing caught at all. So it's a bit of a tough one. I mean, I've tried to sort of accelerate it this last hour, but like so much I've tried today, I can't really pretend it's made any difference. You know, I dropped down hook size, caught one, put the big window on, had a couple of quick chucks with lots of worms, got one but never get two. And like, I just feel like time's pretty much run away now. And like I said, I thought there'd be some fish feeding this last hour, but there hasn't been, or, or there hasn't so far. And it's, I can't, I don't know. To be fair, the bikes have just come out. Other than that, obviously little scratter little tiny fish first, second chuck, two, two pounds, just totally out of the blue. And that's a lot I feel like I'm sat here now, hoping someone's going to pull the rod in out of the blue. I'm tempted to come back. 
because I did have that indication and I'll put that worm in and maybe just sit on that for, for 20 minutes now and then last 10 minutes back out long. I think I'm gonna have one, I think I'm gonna do I have one more chuck on this. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and meet a pass. It's roughly 50 centimetres from that book guide to the uh, first ring. So I'm going to go and meet your pass for, for a six minute and then I'll gamble and finish the match. Gamble and finish the match short at 30 on the basis I've put that big feeder of worm there. Just gonna plug it with neat ground bait. Because I'm not fishing over bait now, I don't think I need the attraction of Actually I don't like that. It's got a little bit right again. I need to be a bit, little bit left of that because of the toe. I don't like fishing up toe, if that makes sense. I'd rather be down toe. That was a fraction. Fraction right. It's a problem with red worms as well. They're so soft. You tend to, you can't smash it because you lose your hook bait. So let's plug it again. That's better. Right, that's got six minutes to pull the rod in. And then I think last half hour last 20 minutes even, sit it out 30 metres, maybe four, three or four casts, pray for a miracle. Nothing more can do. Well, I said I was going to sit short. After I had that liner, this is the, I had three three minute chucks and this has just gone round within I don't know, 30 seconds. It's not a big fish, but it's another fish. We've got literally 11 minutes. If I could get one more, I might be able to nick the section. When I say the section, I'm talking about the five peg money section. Which is a chance. This is obviously that 30 metres first bite I've had. I've had three, three minutes. If I can get this out, I'm going to have three more. Or two more. just to see if it can nip me that, that money section, because I think I'm probably... That peak. The three of that are literally peas in it. Peas in a pod. <laughs> Be nice to get one more, just to make myself feel a bit better about the whole day. for one more, 51. Literally I've got what? Eight minutes, two chucks. Don't know who's more surprised by that bite, me or the fish. Mm -mm. 
That was on a little bit of dendra. First part I've had on it, to be fair. Could just do one more fish, I reckon. For I think I'm going to be about a pound and a half short of the money section at the minute. Imagine you know you get a bite and all of a sudden you buzz. I like that bite half hour ago. Just wet it up a little bit. Again though, just just another totally random bite basically. Out of the blue round it goes. Come on, give me one more fish to finish. And it, interesting that where the fish have been up in them seven, early 70s, they have caught an odd fish at, on their shorter lines as well. Whereas up here, I haven't really seen much caught short. Come on, tip, go round. Just one more proper pull. Probably the warmest part of the day now as well. I have a feeling if you stayed on afterwards, once everyone packed up, you'd catch quite steady. No indication though. But there was no indication before that fish, to be fair. I'm gonna let this, it's got one minute. And then I'm gonna chuck it back out again for what will be the last time, I think. Just feed it a little bit of snack. Right, 25 seconds. Right, I'm gonna have one more chuck and then you'll either join me as the whistle goes or I'll be playing another one. Right, the last chuck is on the dance floor, as they say. I'm going to bother starting the stopwatch because it doesn't really make any difference now. It's such a strange day, really, getting that. I said we had three, like, three two pounders out of nowhere and one little fish. But just no pattern at all. No, 40 seconds. And I don't think it's going to go. I wish it would, but I think it would have gone already if there was a, if there's a little group of fish moved in. But it sort of sums up the day, one bite out of the blue, never two. That's what makes me think there's just not been any amount of fish here though, because I've not managed two bites in any thing. That's your lot. No fish on the end, so three skimmers. Three skimmers, one little skimmer, see what they weigh. Ready? Got you, he's got your best side. Got me best side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one of the Seven palm dead. Ten. Well done. So there you go, not uh, my finest hour, seven pound one, but amazingly it's been enough to win my 50 quid on my money section, which shows how hard it's been. Just 14 pounders won the zone, so I needed to double it, but I don't know how I was gonna do that. I don't feel like I fished a bad match, but it's one of them. You know what I mean? I've been in the hardest section and at the end of the day, I'll take the 50 quid, I think. So this leads me to say, I'll see you next month. <laughs>